We have our 40th annual uh, Ottoman Pilgrimage this weekend in St. Francisville, and it's a way to showcase our town to the state. And we have private homes that are not open to the public. We have four private homes in the state. Great state uh, parks are open in Oakley, and uh, Rosedown are open this, uh, to the, it's all included in one ticket. And we are very historic. We're the second oldest incorporated municipality in the state of Louisiana. We were, we were actually laid out in 1807 under Spanish rule. And our town is, just gets its name from St. Francis for the Franciscan monks who use this high area as a burial ground. But during this three-day festival, we'd encourage everyone to come to St. Francisville, see what, see what you, we have to offer. All the churches are open at this time to the uh, public. We have some very beautiful old churches here. And as I say again, you're coming to the prettiest town in the state of Louisiana. It was started uh, 40 years ago with a group of ladies getting together and deciding that we needed to do something to bring the community together and to sh have an effort that would show everything that's wonderful that goes on here in St. Francisville. And Miss uh, Lucille Lee was the first chairman. And uh, she is just something that's been kind of instilled in us. We start with little small children, sweet maids that dance, and then we go to the Maypole, we do that. And they just gradually grow up, and uh, as they do, they kind of step into the shoes of the older people, and they just take over. And it's just a wonderful community effort. I mean, everyone cleans up their homes, and they paint, and they just make it, you know, so they'll we'll welcome all of our guests. These houses are people's houses. They're not museum pieces. They're not something that the state owns that you can that you can come in any time. These are people's houses. They're only open certain times of the year. Uh, when they're on pilgrimage. And so it's neat to hear the history of these houses. You get it from this little sign, but you also get to know that this is a, an actual house people live in, people, fun, you know, it's still, it's not a museum piece. And there's a lot of history in this part of the state. Uh, it's unique in that it is more of this English influence and not the French influence because a lot of these, this part of the state was settled by the English as, part, as opposed to the French right across the river. So it's very unique. The topography is unique, the history is unique, and we have this nice setting to enjoy it in. It's a fabulous way to showcase this lovely town. A lot of times when I travel around Louisiana, people say, oh, St. Francisville, oh my goodness, it's a lovely, gorgeous town. And it gives people more of a reason to come and visit for the weekend and for people to understand, they, people move so quick these days and life is so fast to be able to come here to relax, enjoy, to soak in the historic uh, preservation of the town. This house is called White's Cottage. It was built in 1903 by a man named Mr. Robert Brasso. Now when he built this house in 1903, this was kind of the center of town. This is where all the activity was. Now it's kind of moved out to Commerce Street and out by 61, but this was where it was all at. You had the courthouse, the Paris Courthouse right down the road. You had, this was Market Hall, which was always had something going on where the farmers were bringing in their crops. There was also a Masonic Hall was here. Later this became Town Hall. So there was also always activity here. Right next door to the house was a bakery. Across the street was a post office. Right over here was the, the Methodist Church. So he was right in the center of town. So when he built this house, since this is called English Louisiana, he used a lot of the English uh, traditional styles in building the house. This is called a dog trot or a pen and passage. And out in the country, the settlers would make these houses, uh, they were a lot more rustic than this. This is a fancy townhouse. But basically what a pen and passage is, it's a central hallway, the passage. On either side of that central hallway were two rooms, were called pens. And in the country, this was open. So the dog could run from the front porch to the back porch. I mean, it was great to keep the house cool. Of course, when you came into town, you had to make it a little bit more fancy. So you had this fancy opening here, you had the fancy windows, and you've raised the, the height of the ceiling. But it's basically the same type of house. A lot of the English settlers, a lot of the English influence was still in, in this parish at that time. So that's the kind of house he built. Um, it went through a series of owners until 1968 when a man named Wingate White bought the house. And at the time, it was being used as a beauty shop. And so he spent a lot of money to get it back into a place where he can put his family, and that's why it's called White's Cottage. Not the Brasso house, but White's Cottage. In 1978, the current owner bought the house. They did some more work to it because they had four children and they wanted to have room for their children. Now they have nine grandchildren, so there's still enough room in the house for all those kids. So it's a very beautiful house, and it's one of the uh, jewels of this part of Royal Street.
they move or they rotate the homes every five years, okay? So that when you come to visit St. Francisville, next year you're not going to see the same home again, which is very nice. So every five years they're, they're on a rotation schedule. Um, I always tell the tourists that you want to come and see the private homes because you're not going to see them for another five, six years. Mm -hmm. and, and it's wonderful to be able to see how they're decorated and, and how the people live in a home of that period and they're decorating, but yet they incorporate their own uh, taste and their own um, memorabilia in the home. trying to depict what what the people that migrated here started out with. And the first building there is a little kitchen, and then they built a little residence, which is a, a hall down the center and a room on each side. If people came here this weekend, what would they see reenactors doing? Well, they, they would, everything from making uh, cracklings uh, and uh, uh, making shingles, and uh, the blacksmith would print the initials in the shingle and, and they'd have paddles and uh, knives that I made out of the cypress sar shingles. And uh, then we, we have, we grind in meal for, to make cornbread and uh, the kitchen is using a wood stove to kitchen cook in. And uh, then the ladies over there spinning and they have the quilting and all of that. That's part of it. All of my family does it. Um, I help in the kitchen and it's just kind of fun. I uh, like how I'm learning how to weave and to quilt and it's fun learning about uh, what they used to do back then. Just come see what happened uh, uh, almost a hundred years ago.